We are in the Med on Berserk, but today we are not going sailing. We are taking the bus inland for four hours, which is actually quite exciting. <laughs> actually quite exciting. I haven't got the bus for years. Why are we taking the bus into Estepona? Well, as you can see, we don't have a spray head and we are itching to get sailing in the Med this season. And a spray head is so important for whilst you're cruising, for protection from the elements, whether it's the spray from waves, the cold or the sun, right now it's definitely the sun. We are cooking. Chris behind the camera is dripping with sweat. So we have teamed up with Magnus and Sales in uh, southern Spain in Estepona. They have got over 40 years of experience sail making and with canvas work. So we are delighted to be having them do our spray hood. And in case you missed it, our last episode was all about um, templating for a new spray hood if you want to do it yourself. So check it out in the link. I'll put it here, maybe there. <laughs> um, so you can check that out and then hop back onto this one. Uh, so we were actually in Estepona uh, when Danny came on board and we templated it out. We've now moved down the coast so we are hopping on the bus back to Danny where we get to go into his sail workshop. I'm really excited um, and we can see it all come together. We have been told that he's only got one day to do it so it's going to be a fast paced high action day so we're kind of aware that we might not be able to do a full on XYZ tutorial, but we're going to try and capture as much as we can and highlight the main things um, so you can see how it comes together. And I'm really excited because we have heard that uh, with canvas work, there's quite often a bit of tweaking here and there to do at the end. So stay tuned to see if we get it fitted first time. Fingers crossed so we don't have to get the bus back. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Let's get this show on the road and not miss the bus. As you'll know from part one in this series, Danny marked various reference points on the spray hood pattern. Now it's time to lay the pattern pieces flat and check the reference points line up with the other panels. If these don't line up, it's recommended you hop back on the boat and recheck them before continuing. Once you're happy everything lines up, be sure to mark the inside and outside, then cut them out right along your lines. Okay, so before we move on, we thought it's best to share with you what tools and materials we use through the process. Okay, so you guys are covered. We're going to give you a list of the materials that you need for this process. So first off is obviously the canvas, um, good quality canvas, and ours is silicon backed for that extra bit of waterproofness, which is fab. You have your PVC for the windows, again, from our experience as well, definitely get high quality PVC because literally within a season we couldn't see through our windows when we went with cheap quality at one stage. So definitely high quality PVC for the windows. You then got your thread. So recommended is a sort of bonded polyester thread. And I think the most important thing is UV stable. So definitely a UV stable thread. You've got your edge tape, which is actually made of the same material as the canvas, which is cool to know. It's obviously just got a different weave. Uh, so this is the tape that's been folded around the edges here. You then have your one inch webbing. Again, good quality webbing is recommended. And your buckle here for your cinching points. And then your zip. So um, depending on the style of your spray head, you'll have multiple zips. Um, but a good quality chunky zip um, is recommended. So I'll hop over to the bench and just take you through the tools list. So in terms of the tools, we have a steel rule and quite important, a smaller, thinner steel rule for the more finicky stuff. Pencil and ideally a second color as well for marking reference points so it's easier to distinguish. Scissors and ideally with a softer edge on the bottom here so it's not too sharp damaging any material underneath. Two different thicknesses of double sided sticky tape. Pins, these are the little pins which are just uh, so valuable. 
And this little rod, which if you can see, really helps to um, create curve. And then if you can get your hands on one of these for cutting and sealing, for example, webbing and the edge of the material, etc. So now we have the canvas on the floor and the plastic pattern pieces laid on top. And you guessed it, it's time to mark and cut them out. You'll see Danny has two rulers in action here. The small one gives a half inch seam allowance. The wider one is used for a one inch seam allowance where zips will be positioned. You'll see why that's handy later on. Then the canvas panels are flipped over and reference points are repeated on the other side for convenience when you're essentially stitching inside out. So this is really interesting. The spray hood is attached to the frame by zipped tunnels. These need to follow the same shape as the fore and aft of the top panel. So Danny is cutting the canvas for one of the tunnels from the leftover material after he's cut that top panel out so it follows the same curve. I mean, how smart is this? Then on a similar tack he follows the curve on the other edge for the second tunnel. And uses a neat hem gauge to mark the hem around a curve. But you could just use the rulers here to create a half inch seam allowance. Okay, so this looks quite complex, but all Danny's doing here is sewing a reinforcement patch on each end of the tunnel panel. After that, he fitted the edge tape, but he was so quick we missed it and he was straight onto the zip. Note the tunnel panel has not been cut yet. With two stitch lines on each side, the zip is more than secure. At this point, flip the tunnel panel over and using the teeth of the zip as a guide for your scissors, make the first cut. Then repeat on the other side to reveal the full zip. Seal the ends of the edge tape and cut the zip with a hot knife. Or cut it and seal with a flame. Once you've made the first tunnel, hop onto your second or third. Right now Danny is preparing reinforcement patches. These can be any shape you like really and positioned anywhere you think you might need them. Danny puts these at the end of the tunnels and over every fixing point. Double sided sticky tape is your friend here. Wherever you join any panels together on the spray hood, it's best to use double sided sticky tape to ensure no slipping whilst you run your stitch. Be sure to stitch these reinforcement patches on before you actually stitch any panels together. So moving on to the front panel, this is where it gets exciting. Right now, Chris and Danny are deciding on the style of windows we're going for. So you can basically go with whatever shape you fancy, but it is recommended to go for three windows over one long window to prevent deformation when the spray hood is tensioned up in position. As you can see, Danny's just drawing the windows on and simply using a roll of tape to create the curves that we wanted. Back to the double sided sticky tape again, you gotta love this stuff! And then cut your plastic. And another pro tip, which I think is my favorite because it's so simple, but you stitch your window sort of um, plastic panels in to the front panel, but then don't cut the canvas out so you can actually see through the window till the very end, because um, of course it's going to protect the plastic until you're good to go. If you cut the canvas out straight away, there's just more chance of scratching and marking the plastic before it goes on the boat. So now, you guessed it, stick your windows down as smooth as you can.
and stitch straight through the double sided sticky tape with a double stitch. Now trim the plastic, but remember, don't cut the canvas out yet. So it's now time to join your first two panels together. As always, using double-sided sticky tape and make sure all of your reference points line up. As you'll see here, Danny will stitch the two panels together from the inside first. Once he's completed the first stitch line, he positions the first tunnel. Make sure to follow centre points here to ensure the tunnel remains central. Then secure the tunnel with a stitch line along its length. When you've done that, flip the spray head over, fold the seam flat and secure it flat by stitching from the outside. Doing this gives a really neat finish from the inside and the outside. So now the front and top panels are stitched together and half of the first tunnel is stitched in place. It's now time to stitch the other side of the tunnel. But don't be fooled to stitch this in flat. You really need to account for the diameter of the tubular frame. Danny folds a pleat into this to account for the frame and then stitches it down. At last, you've now got something that looks like a spray hood. Moving on to the side panels, mark out the pattern onto the canvas, accounting for your half inch seam allowance, and use a batten or ruler to create a fair curve. And right now, Danny is marking out where the webbing will be secured, which will be close to the aft edge of the side panel. But remember to count for your edge tape that will be folded around this edge too. If you wish to put in reinforcement patches here, which is recommended, secure them with double-sided sticky tape, stitch them on and trim off the excess as Danny is doing here. Now grab the roll of edge tape and stitch it along the aft edge only. The other edges will be done later with the rest of the spray hood. Now it's time to add the webbing. It runs down the entire aft edge of the side panel. Make sure to cut enough length to reach the webbing bridge and back to the buckle. It's easier to cut a bit off later than it is to be caught short. Then you can prepare your buckle tabs and stitch them in line with the webbing, but on the opposite side. Now your side panels are done. Take one, align it with the reference points on the rest of the spray hood and just like the main panels, stitch it from the inside first, then follow with a stitch from the outside, leaving that nice flat seam. Then repeat for the opposite side. Once you've got both side panels stitched on, it's time to put the finishing edge tape along the unfinished edge of the whole spray hood. Start from the bottom corner of a side panel, work your way around the front panel and down the other side panel and finish on the bottom corner of that panel.
All the edge tape should now meet, meaning the spray hood has no unfinished edges. Quick as a flash, Danny was on to stitching the second tunnel. The tunnel should be stitched face to face with the spray hood. Once the stitch is done, fold out the tunnel so the whole thing is flat and stitch again. Next, with the spray hood upside down, tape the other edge of the tunnel, again creating a pleat to accommodate the frame and fix with two stitch lines as per the rest. So it's very much starting to look more like a spray hood, which is looking fantastic. Just wanted to point this out, another pro tip. So this is the sort of channel for the front bar. So this zip houses the front bar to keep it in place. And the panel could have been stitched on flat like this, but instead the pros give it a little bit more fabric. You can see here. So there's space for the bar, because the bar is not flat, it's sort of curved, isn't it? So that nice little bit of extra uh, material here gives it that nice shape so it just fits really naturally. Next thing to think about is how we're going to attach the front panel to the boat. As we mentioned in the first video, our boat has a slot into which a luff rope slides into. Given the size of the spray hood, it's quite hard to manipulate it through the slot and Danny recommends separating the luff rope from the front panel with two zips that meet in the middle. So here Danny is sewing the luff rope in and attaching the zip, all as close together as he can. Once the luff rope is secured to the two zips, using double-sided sticky tape, we can now prepare to attach this to the front of the spray hood. Starting with the zips in the middle of the spray hood and the materials back to back, position the luff rope inside of the edge tape of the spray hood. This is to ensure the luff rope slot will be hidden by the edge tape as it will finish lower when it's all fitted on the boat. To go around curves, you may need to cut the zip tape to achieve this, but try not to cut more than half the width of the zip tape, otherwise you will lose too much strength. You may end up with a raise in the luff rope like this. Try and keep this raise minimal, as the example shown here is as much as you're likely to get away with. Stitch this on, again with two full length stitch lines. Then you run to the home run, the windows! Remember those snips Danny put into the corner of the windows? This is why. Using your stitching as a guide and the snip as an entry point, cut the canvas out, revealing your sparkly new windows. So this is the finished spray hood. The job is done and it's absolutely amazing. These guys are so talented. Uh, as you can see, it's actually quite a complex process, so we're really thankful to have teamed up with Magnuson Sales for this. And we can highly recommend Magnuson Sales. If you guys are sailing in the Med, these guys are in southern Spain and one of the only people still making their own sails from scratch and honestly, the quality here is so good. Highly recommend them. So Danny, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. And uh, yeah, let's get this on the boat. Check it out! We have a new spray hood. I am so stoked with how it's worked out. It fitted like a glove. It literally took us probably about 30 seconds to put on. We thought it was gonna take at least a few minutes, but Danny has nailed it. Um, what a whirlwind in the workshop that was. Uh, if you missed it, our previous episode was all about templating the spray hood for yourself. So we take through the stages that Danny goes through to template it to get you to the stage of the workshop. So if you missed that, go back an episode and, and check that out. 
and I'm so excited because this now means that we've got sun shelter for the rest of our time in the med which is so good like that's what the sprue head is all about for us right now previously in Scotland it was all about currying in and sheltering from the rain but now it is protection from the sun I'm melting right now um, so cannot wait to get out and test it and you might have noticed those with the keen eye behind me that the after the boat is looking a little bit bare that is because we are right in the middle of um, building our own solar arch from scratch so Chris has designed it he's fabricating it and then we're going to install it in a few days actually so if you want to check that out subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss those episodes it's going to be a couple of um, couple of parts to the series I, I cannot wait to, to pull it together for you guys and that is about it so we'll see you in the water